I look so <laughs> I was looking so low. <laughs> I was looking so much lower than you. It doesn't matter. The people know. They seen the pictures. Aw. Yeah, they seen the pictures, so you'll be fine. I think you have a few people joining. Hey everybody. No, I'm so used to your hey y'all thing. Hey y'all. There we go. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> Where are you guys from? I'm gonna put the topic. Mostly they might not wanna tell you where they're from. They may not, that's okay too. Where y'all from? Let's well, say, what you wanna ask them what they do for a living too? Yep. <laughs> I guess, never mind. I, I don't know how to pin it. Looks like you just found out. I did. I learned something new. Hey, y'all. We'll get started in a little while. We wanted to give people some time to join. The topic today is fears and frustrations. I pinned it at the bottom. It's supposed to say frustrations, but it says frustration, but y'all get where I'm going with that. Mm. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Um, what did you say you wanted to start with? Really? how we're doing i was just going to ask you about your week that's all oh um my week is going busy hectic um but i'm making it through so busy and hectic yeah, <laughs> yeah. i would say it's kind of busy because i feel like it's a lot going on and stuff but um mm -hmm. i feel like i've got like so many different things that i'm juggling with but mm -hmm. what about you mm -hmm. oh, doing i'm saying doing okay Hmm. Yeah, you know, work, trying to get stuff uh, in the books. Um, start of the month, well, actually getting towards the midpoint of the month. So, yeah, um, things are kind of flowing. Um, so, we'll see how, where things take us. Okay, dear. Hey, girl. All right, so um, any, any good any good TV shows already? Good TV shows. Um, what's that sort of show that just came back? Um, with oh. Megan Good Harlem. Oh, okay. Harlem. Oh. I've been watching Harlem. I love Harlem. Um, our day is going pretty good. It's busy, but mm -hmm. our day is going pretty good. What about yourself? Um. Hey, everybody, as you guys are joining, um, Harlem, I would say, is a good show. I think they drop episodes every Friday, and... Is that as good as the first season? Uh, I think so, so far. I mean, it's kind of hard to say, because I think it's only, what, three episodes so far. Oh, I don't know. I just... Yeah, yeah, I think I it's only three episodes, so, yeah. But it's pretty good, and then I, I still like, you know, like, New Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. She has been on a binge on New Amsterdam watching. What's the, how many seasons they have on Netflix right now? Four. But I'm, yeah. I'm still on season three. Yeah, she, I haven't gotten to four yet. Yeah, she went through two seasons of it almost in a month. I did. I did. I did. Yeah, so. I did. Um, what about shows for you? I feel like I haven't watched anything. You know, Super Bowl is coming up. Sports. Who do you want to win the Super Bowl? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Chiefs, but I feel like the Eagles have a better team, so. So I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I feel like I should go with the Eagles, but it's tough to go against Patrick Mahomes. So. Who do you think is going to win? The Eagles? The Chiefs. Oh. I was like, you said you feel like the Eagles is a better I said, team. I said, mean, yeah, I feel like they're a better team, but I feel like the Chiefs are going to win for whatever reason. Because the Chiefs have been to the Super Bowl with Patrick how many times? I think this is the third time. Mm -hmm. This is the Eagles' first time. Yeah. Um, well, for the quarterback. I know some of their other players, um, I forget how many years ago, went to the Super Bowl. But, yeah, they've been to the Super Bowl a few times. But you only want to watch the Super Bowl for one reason. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Well, I like the Super Bowl because I want to see Rihanna. Rihanna is my girl. I'm excited to see her. Um... That's really it. Like, I mean, football is cool, mm -hmm. but I'm more of like a basketball person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You have any, uh, 
What songs do you think she's going to go through and do? I don't know. I hope she comes out with some new ones, because I think that'd be pretty cool. But um, I don't, that new song that's look, out, that's kind of like a sad song. I forget. You think she did it at Super Bowl? I don't know. Maybe. I think she's going to bring some special think, guests with her or something. I think she's going Well, I think she is going to do that. But I think she's probably going to play basically her popular songs. Mm-hmm. Cause I read, I read somewhere, and I think we will bring it up later. But I read some somewhere that uh, that she's trying to make it like a like a celebration of everything that she did mm-hmm. done so far. Yeah. So I think I think that's what she's gonna do. I think because if you think about it, people in the crowd can't sing with you if you don't they don't know your song, especially that's if, it's, true. if it's new. That's true. And yeah. so the Super Bowl is probably not the best way to debut it. That's true. Yeah, because you don't want you know you don't want your fans quiet the entire time. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. 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 It'd make it terrible. Um. Okay. So. Hey, y'all, as y'all are joining. All right, so the topic is fears and frustrations. Now, me and my husband are supposed to be doing this individually, but he, I keep asking him, like, hey, did you write down your fears and frustrations? And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, you know we're going live in a few minutes, and he still didn't have anything written down. So I don't know what you're going to say, but... Well, I'm I'm being organic, so I didn't write anything <laughs> okay. down. I come to the pod ready. Hey, everybody. Go. Um. Okay, so fears. For me? What are your fears? You want me to go I, first or you want to go? No, it's fine. I can think of, I can think something on the fly. Um, as far as fears, I think you have to categorize it into different parts. Like, I think you have fears as being a husband um just thinking like probably like you're not enough Mm -hmm. um thinking that uh maybe probably like especially when you get married you know men like to be in control so to making sure you're like i guess it's not necessarily being control making sure you i guess you're not controlled Mm -hmm. i can see that i can see that yeah i can see that as being one Mm -hmm. um as far as kids if you have kids uh, making sure nothing. Are, this, are these your fears, or are you just speaking in general? Because we're supposed to be sharing our fears. Oh, we're sharing our fears. Um, yeah. Oh, like, I thought you meant. You're just like, in general. I can see if it could go like this. I can. See well, I guess, I guess, I guess, both of those could be my fears. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they apply, but I wasn't they apply, sure. They, apply, just they, apply, they apply. Okay. Um, I would say, I would say, uh, what did I say? Being inadequate or not good enough. Not wanting to lose yourself and being too controlled. Yeah, yeah, yeah being controlled. I think those um, are fear for a lot of men, I would say. Why yeah. do you think that? Um, because as far as the controlling piece, especially when you're single, you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about anybody telling you what to do. Mm-hmm. So, and then you get in a relationship and then you feel, you know, you get married. You know, a lot of guys, you know, they tell you, all right, life's over. Mm-hmm. You know, ball and chain. Yeah. You do, uh, you know. Do whatever the wife, you know, wants. So, you know, happy wife, happy life. So that's the controlling part. Yeah. So I think a lot of guys don't don't like that. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the not good enough part, you know, um, I think that applies to everything, whether it comes financially, physically, um, just everyday life. Um, you might see a guy do something else mm-hmm. on, I guess, Instagram, since we're on Instagram. Mm-hmm. But you can see him uh, do something in everyday life, and you're like, okay. You know, I wish I could do that. Or or if just a regular guy, you see, you know, how you have these uh, little 15-second uh, or 30-second clips that come up, uh, flowers all the way around the house, and then your wife's like, mm, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I think that plays that plays a part into it, too. So um, and I think, yeah, just trying to make sure everything goes right as far as a marriage. Because as a guy, you know, I'm pretty sure you know guys know that they're not perfect. Well, you know, the norm, I'll say us normal people know that <laughs> we're not perfect, but hey, you, know, you still strive to be the best at everything you do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, so I think as far as being a husband, um, that's those are some fears. Mm-hmm. Um, and you try, you know, you try to be your best every day, but you know, some days you're not your best. So you gotta, you, you just gotta make it through those days. And then, as far as a parent. I think just making sure nothing happens to your kid, mm-hmm. whether, you know, that's, that's the major fear. It's making sure they're safe, making sure, um, I would say nobody, nobody harms them. Mm-hmm. They don't, look, they don't harm themselves. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a whole lot of things. And I think it's different levels 
Because when they're babies, you're like, okay, I just need to make sure, you know, yeah, I'm checking on them, making sure they still breathe and yeah. look like simple, like stuff now that you really don't check on as much. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's different. Uh, again, as you get older, as they get older, it's different. Yeah. It's different so yeah, that's kind of. Um, I would say those those are um, your fears. fears. Yeah, fears. You know, right off the cuff. Um, well, I wrote mine down, y'all. Mm-hmm. Hey, so. So, so so you see, you asked me a question. And I you got it, and I got it, it. and I got it done. Yes, you did, you did. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, what I, that's what I like to tell the people. I okay, say, so I'm prepared when I'm not prepared. Hey, okay, just gotta let them know. So, um, <laughs> one of my fears, I would say, um, and I'm very bad at this, is when I hear other people's circumstances, I automatically feel like that will happen to me. So, like, I'm like, um, if I hear about somebody else, like, their marriage may have ended up in divorce or their husband passed away or their kid passed away or um, their kid is sick or their husband's sick or really anything that I hear, um, no majority of the things that I hear, I start to picture myself like, what if that was my kid? What if that was my husband? What if that? And that's not what I'm supposed to be doing, but I feel like that's a big fear for of mine that I find myself always thinking about like other people's situations, other people's circumstances and feeling like that would be my own. And, um, is there a reason behind that though? I don't know. Has I feel like ha- the reason happen- is, has it happened before? No. Well, well, obviously that not that because well, you, you know I'm still I'm still here. So. Yeah, no, no. That's the thing that I don't, I can't figure out. I feel like a lot of times um, sure. other people's situations don't necessarily become my own. Um, but I don't know. I think it's all it all stems from fear, mm-hmm. fear of the unknown. I guess I'd say. As I cross my, try to cross my leg, I should have brought my glasses for this segment. So <laughs> you said fears is uh, since I'm gonna play your role. As a, be- okay, as, a be- as a bacaba. This would be a therapist role. Okay. Well, bacaba sounds better. And that's BCBA, by the way. But, okay. you know, I can't cross them over. Anyway, so you said this fear stems from you hear other people speak, and then it brings up a fear in you. Mm-hmm. So where does just fear in general come from? Is it early childhood? Is it something... Later in adult life, young adult life. Mm-mm. Hmm. So we might have to break. Not this. that I. <laughs> we might have to break this down further. No, not that I can think of. I don't know. I don't know where I got that from. But I, I've I've gotten to the point now where I feel like that kind of consumes me. Now I'm like always thinking like, what if this happens? What if that happens? I think it really stems from me being controlling. Mm-hmm. Like I try to. Um, I heard mm-hmm. a. I heard my, a. My fear. I see. <laughs> Okay, I heard a sermon the other day that said, um, don't try to play God, and I think that that's, not that I think that I'm God, just like so for clear, no, but, you know, I don't think I'm God, I'm not trying to be God, anything like that, um, but no. I think that I'm not, when I say that I mean I'm not allowing God to play, to play his role. So I, I have those controlling tendencies, and I feel like I'm trying to like control my life. And I feel like when it comes to, no, I feel like when it comes to certain things like death or sicknesses or anything like that, I don't necessarily have control over that, Mm -hmm. but I can plan my whole day. I can plan like, okay, I'll wake up at this time. I'll do this. I'll do that. And I think that for me, I fear those things that I can't control. I think that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Like I can't control. So do you think that's a normal trait for a, a woman or that's just you? Um, I don't necessarily think that it's normal because I feel like it's kind of consumed me. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's, I think that those things are normal to fear. Like, I think that, you know, most people do fear like they're, they're, um, anything happening to their, their loved ones. I think that that's normal, but I think that I've kind of gotten to the point where I think about it too much. Some days are better than others. So when you say too much, uh, are you thinking about it all day, like from when you wake up till you go to sleep? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I'd say like once or twice a day. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not to that. No, yeah, no, like not like multiple times. But I think it really just stems from me. Um, I I just like to control my life. And when I hear about other people's situations, like getting in car accidents and... Um, you know, just think life happens and I just have to accept that. But I think that for me, 
I just don't, um, I fear things that I can't control. So would you say, do you think that comes from television? Because that's where you would see most of those things at. No. If you scroll on Instagram sometimes, you can see people, <laughs> my... So it come, my, oh, so it comes more from social media. Well, like just that. anywhere. You, I can run into a person that told me that their 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 daughter died. I can mm-hmm. run into somebody who tells me that their kids got cancer. I can, you know, I can, I can, hey y'all, I can um, run into anybody that's telling me their life situation. But for some reason, no matter what it is, and I do this for good things or bad things, so yeah... But I just always, I hear people's stories sometimes and I try to put myself in their shoes and I, and I almost like, what would I do in this situation? How would I deal with this? And well, I think, that, I think personally that's, that part is normal mm-hmm. uh, because like when you try to, in that scenario, if somebody was to say, um, let's just take the example, um, um, whew, I don't want to say that one because I ain't wishing that on nobody, mm-hmm. but um, let's just say that... Um, it's like if somebody you knew got into a car accident. Let's right. just, say, let's just yeah. use that. Mm-hmm. So then you would put one, of, let's just say you put one of your family members in that situation, how you would react. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that I think that part is normal, especially when somebody else is explaining it to you. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's a little different if you start to dwell on it too much. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm kind of at the point where I'm dwelling on it a little too much sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really feel like it's... Um, I think that it really just stems down to the fact that I am controlling. Because you know me, I'm a therapist anyway. So I try to dissect why I think I, the way that I think. But I really just comes down to the, I can control my day. I'm a planner. I can control um, certain things in my day. But the things that I can't control are the things that I fear. Okay. And the things that kind of consume me. Okay, I have two questions for you. Okay, so you say you do it on both sides. So you said mm-hmm. you do it for the bad side, but you do it for the good side. Mm-hmm. So what's some of the good things that you would dwell on? Um, just whether that be like living in like certain neighborhoods with large houses or, mm-hmm. um, you know, just, just, just like fantasizing in a sense. Yeah, I guess in a sense, like okay. fantasizing, like, oh, if I lived here, what would that be like like that? Or if I had this, what would it be like for that? So I think to some extent it's healthy because I think a lot of people do that. But I think the part for me is just, just I don't want to be fearful of the. I don't want the fear to consume me. I think it's normal to be fear fearful of certain things because I mean that's life. But mm-hmm. I shouldn't be at the point where I'm like every every single situation that I hear about isn't going to be. Um, it's it. It just isn't, it's not that serious. Like, it's not that deep. Um, Candace said, oh, I'm sorry. So, underscore, she says, <laughs> just had this conversation in therapy. Fear of the unknown and lack of control for me. She suggested that I focus and work on being present. That's so true. I, I totally agree. Um, fear of the unknown is just, is just so stressful. But the reality of it is, and I try to tell myself this every single time I have these thoughts, is... No matter how much I try to control things, no matter how much I sit here and wish I can like, you know, this isn't going to happen and that's not going to happen. Life is already written. Every single thing is already planned out. So regardless of how much I allow to waste my, my day on what's all going on or what I don't want to happen, things are already set up. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. So am I going to just spend my life worried or am I just going to live life and whatever happens, happens. And that's just, it is what it is. Mm, okay. That's what I try to tell myself because at the end of the day, no matter if I sit here and think about a thought, think about something happening to me 50 times, it's not going to save that from happening or stop that from happening. It's basically final destination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put it, put it simply. yeah i mean mm-hmm. i don't know I, I think that's something that i'm gonna have to work on over time but for me i just feel like i always fear the unknown i think it's the controlling person in me and i do have to work on being present like candace said mm-hmm. and being in the moment and realizing i can't control everything okay so as far as the controlling nature mm-hmm. what do you think will help that because as you said you said earlier that as a therapist, you feel like you're controlling situations. Mm-hmm. So what? Do you, how do you feel that when you put things, how do you, I guess, relinquish control? And you just let things go. Because if that, because that seems to be the major factor in this. Um, 
So underscore she say, even our worst days, we made it through. That's what I have to keep reminding myself. That's so true. And Lauren Love 5 said, faith in God really helps me when it comes to fear. You are absolutely right. Um, that's so true. Okay, what did you say? Sorry. That's, okay, so <laughs> back, back to the controlling thing. Okay, so uh -huh. I was saying, um, I'll shorten it up, but I was saying you said you're in control. Mm -hmm. I would say as a therapist, you're controlling situations. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a question about that, but you're controlling situations. Um, basically, you're in control um, when you do things. Um, you have a set plan for your day. Mm -hmm. So how do you take steps to relinquish that control? I'm not saying that having control in all situations is a bad thing. Yeah. But how do you relinquish that control to basically, it sounds like, put some ease on your mind? Um, well, for one, I've realized that, um, give it to God 100%. Um, I've realized that being controlling is learned behavior. So there's somebody in my family that's kind of close to me that is controlling mm. as well. <laughs> and I've realized that... <laughs> I've realized that when you're around people, well, you know, as you grow up, you, you take in people's mannerisms and things that you see mm -hmm. over time, um, and you, yeah, you because, pick and choose what you're going to... Yeah, because it's only natural mm -hmm. what you grow up around, and that's why people it's say... It's what you become, or what, what you don't pick up. And that's why people say, you know, make sure you know who you associate with, because yes. that's who you're going to or wind up being, or yeah. that's how people are going to perceive you. Yeah. So. so I think that that's where, that's where my controlling nature came from. There's a lot of people in my family that's controlling, and I've picked up those traits, which can be good or bad, but um, yeah, it is not, what it it's, is. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, terrible, a bad thing, but mm -hmm. when it causes you to, let's just say, lose sleep, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And well, I'm not at the point where I'm losing sleep, because I sleep no, good. No, so that's, I, what, I said, that's, what, that's why I said lack of a better term. said not her. That's why I said lack of a better term. Oh, so that's what you said. Yeah. Um, but really... Really what it is, is God doesn't intend me to be controlling. Um, he wants me to relinquish that control to him. And so y'all are absolutely right. That's really what it is, is that I can't, I can't, my job is to cast all my worries upon him and not stress myself out. Um, I used to have anxiety and be real stressed out a lot to the point where it would just consume me completely. Now I have little thoughts throughout the day, but I think because... I am a therapist. I know what techniques to do um, to keep that in control. So I'm 100% sleeping throughout the night and I'm not like, you know, to the point where it's like out of control. But I, I definitely sh struggle with that and letting, making sure that I relinquish control because it's not for me to control my life. So do you think as a, as a therapist, since everybody's bringing, not everybody, but you're I guess, would you say clients? Client. Mm -hmm. Wait, is it clients? Okay. So would you say your clients, when they put, not I won't say their worries, but their situations, um, I guess in a sense, their fears, um, things they're going through mm -hmm. into your head, is that what makes you think about um, I would say no, because you know now, I don't, I don't work primarily as a therapist now. I work with... Um, intellectual yeah. dis disabled uh, yeah, 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 adults. adults so they don't so. really you know our conversations are totally different different, yeah, different. than okay. yeah so um but before eh, i feel like before i would hear so many traumatic stories I, you hear it so much at the point where you're just kind of like okay girl what's going on now mm -hmm. like i would hear it so much that i didn't really have the time to think about myself in the situation because by the time i get a chance to think it's the next client so mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that <laughs> i've always worked at places where it's so fast paced so i just didn't have a chance to think um are you too familiar with enogram Eno is that enogram I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know what it is, but we can look it up. Um, okay, while you're looking that up, my next fear is... Um, oh, oh, there's more? Yeah, there's more because y'all know I'm deep. <laughs> um, my next fear is projecting situations from my past relationships onto my husband. Y'all, this is so big for me. Let me tell y'all. You may not remember this, but I know what when... Is, it's, oh, what is Enneagram? It's the person, a personality, personality test. test. 
Oh, that'd be really cool. Maybe we should take that. Let's see. It is discover who you truly are with our detailed personality test. All right, this isn't a plug, so that's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so let me read that again. Projecting situations from past relationships onto my husband. Um, okay, there was one specific moment when I first met my husband. We were dating for like a, a, a month. A and month? I think it was like a month. And at the time, I worked for... Well, I'm not going to say where I worked because... So anyway, the company that I worked for... Um, they, uh, they gave us rental cars and he had taken the rental car and he just disappeared with it. And I didn't know where he went. He disappeared. I know he's talking about now. I don't remember where you said you were going, but you were gone for like a very long time. Well, it felt oh. like a very long time. Anyway, this is my part of the point of the story. Oh. He can tell his part. Yeah, that's later. not the story so anyway, at all. He takes the he takes the rental car and he just vanishes in my in my opinion. There you go. And he um, is gone for a while. So in my mind, my first thoughts are: Do he got some hoes? I mean, where is he going? Did he go gone. to the hoes' house? I mean, where I was is gone he? At? Probably a max of fifteen minutes. He was. You were gone longer than fifteen minutes. No, but the point I being wasn't. is, he just kind of vanished. Well, long story short. He comes back and he went to go and vacuum out the car and clean out the car. But the person in me and the t- and the type of men that I dated prior to meeting him, they w- they were kind of shady and stuff like that. And this is not to shame them because at the end of the day, I chose them. So something was wrong with me. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, mm. I realized in I that to, moment my glasses for these sessions. that I was traumatized from past relationships and I'm projecting it onto him because if I remember correctly, I kind of was like mad at you mm-hmm. and I, call, I called him and was mad at him and he was doing something nice, but because of situations from my past, I was, um, I would say kind of disrespectful towards him and he didn't deserve that. And, so And that was longer than a month. Okay, yeah. I don't remember how yeah, long no, that I, was. I, but, I, I, remember, I remember. Yeah. I remember yeah, so I don't know. I I realized that um, a, a fear for me is um, I think obviously now I would say I'm a lot better because like this is my new normal. But I would say in the very beginning it was so it was so <laughs> difficult for me <laughs> to um, look at the past relationships. Look at it. <laughs> it was so difficult for me to go from the bad guy to the good guy. And just the history of my patterns, because I feel like people see, like, you know, I'm married now and our life is, you know, how it is now. But the pre-married destiny, um, I felt like I was dating guys that I already knew were not for me because I already knew what it was. And I feel like that was my defense mechanism. Like, okay, I already know his red flags are X, Y, and Z. I already know this ain't going to be my husband, but I'll entertain him until I find my husband type thing. That's how I would date. Um, And I thought that that was healthy. And then later I realized that no matter if I entertain them for five minutes, 20 minutes, uh, a month, it's (laughs) it's still, you can't go through life like that because even though you already know who people are, it's still how they interact with you and things that they do to you, you still carry that on into the different relationships that you have. So, um, I say all that to say, basically I was not, I was, I'm thankful that I met my husband when I did. And I thought that mentally I was ready to meet him. But what I realized was because of those past relationships that I was in, um, I wasn't mentally ready because I wasn't ready for the, the good man that, that God has sent me. Um, and I showed that not in what I verbalized, but in my um, in my actions. Because it's easy to say, I'm ready, Lord, send me my husband. But the way that I acted in that specific moment, and I'm sure other moments, let me know that I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I hadn't dealt with what I needed to deal with. So just a fear of projecting negativity on my husband that he didn't deserve, mm. I guess would be the Spark Notes version. Okay. So sorry for that. Oh, okay. Thank you. I accept your apology. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to share with them your point of view, or like, what? How did that oh. feel to you when I um, went off on you for no reason when you were doing like a, a nice gesture? Oh, I don't. I don't think I took it that serious. To be honest with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I took that one that serious. Okay. Well. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Mo- yeah. Most things, I think. I think You're pretty laid back. Yeah, I'm pretty laid back about. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I don't think I even really cared about it. Yeah. 
Well, that's that. good because yeah, I, I felt bad after the fact. Oh. Yeah, I was. I felt really bad after the fact. But let me tell y'all, my husband is so chill. It would really have to. I mean, nobody can come and say anything to him, and he would probably never react. It does not matter who you are. It don't matter. You could probably cuss him out, and he just looking at you like, okay, whoa, you're whoa, clearly whoa, whoa. having slow, a bad day. Whoa, whoa, slow down. Okay, slow, that's slow, obviously being slow extreme, down. but slow you no matter what he's in. My sister's kind of like this too. Like they're not gonna let somebody ruined their day and i love that about both of them like they're both so chill even kill like they're not gonna um allow small things to affect them and i love that about both of y'all but um yeah he's so chill even when i was acting crazy he was still chill that's why you always have somebody crazy in the relationship and then you always have somebody sane i don't think that's how it's supposed to work Okay, so that, those are my fears. Um, yeah, just projecting my past relationships onto my husband and then feeling or having other circumstances or projecting other people's circumstances into my own life. Okay. I would say. All right, so what would you say are your frustrations? Frustration, I guess. I guess, I'll go, I guess I have to go off the cuff again. Um, frustrations in marriage. Is it cuff or cusp? Go off the cuff. Oh. oh no. Okay, good. I'm sorry. That's a behavior term that I got stuck in my head. Good. Oh. Um. Oh, good. we had some questions. Oh. No, I don't think we had any questions. Well, you had something. Oh, you two seem like a great. Uh, the Ron Westfall said you two seem like a great couple. My wife and I really enjoy you two. Thanks for being open and honest. Oh, thank you. We really try. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Candace said, except if kids pour poop on him. <laughs> right, that part. Yeah, yeah. He is that's, like, why I, that's why I said not to everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why I said not to everything. Um, okay, so what is your what are your frustrations? Uh, let's see. If I have to go off the dome again. Uh, frustrations. Uh, I would say probably tension in a relationship. Just if like something happens and then you know you have an argument or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to express yourself and basically doing it in a manner that doesn't, uh, you know, spark up more tension. Yeah. So that's uh, trying to navigate through that. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be that would be my number one probably, as far as frustrations. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out, all right, you know, I would say something happens and now you feel like you're stepping on eggshells, mm -hmm. and you're over here like, all right, I want to make sure the next word I say doesn't just set her over the edge. <laughs> so, so you mean, like, you mean, like, even though I feel like I'm fairly calm, yeah, like, but like I, but like I, like I said, if there's tension at the time, yeah, yeah. then I you're get like, what you're saying. Yeah, it's like it's always awkward when you're both mad at each other. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I want to make a joke, but I can't make. Yeah, a joke can't make it. Can't make that joke right now because <laughs> I'm mad at him. So, or you already had a plan to do something, mm -hmm. and now it's like. Okay, I'm about to go play video games. Oh, okay, so that's what you're going to do. You know I'm... Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's like a, it's yeah, a setup either way. Yeah, so it doesn't... <laughs> it's like, uh, all right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that would be my number one. Um, mm -hmm. Frustration for kids. Um, right now, they're still young, so uh, when they poop um, at night. <laughs> yeah, they poop. Our yeah. kids have been pooping in the middle of the night, and they've been doing like these major blowouts. So we started well, mainly him, mm -hmm. started changing them in the middle of the night so that way in the morning we don't have such a cleanup. But, it's, um, but they still... It still is hit or miss. Uh, that's a whole other story in itself. We, yeah. we probably... Yeah, no. That's it's, a a, whole, it's a work in progress. We're not going to bore y'all with that. As soon as they get potty trained, they get potty trained. Yeah, like as soon as they get potty trained, they get potty trained. What, as soon as they can get potty trained, they are getting potty trained. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe I didn't say it clear, but that's what I meant. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah but... Uh, what other frustration? There's the kids being yeah, I'm saying yeah, kid yeah, the kids yeah, but the kids are good in general. To be honest with you, mm -hmm, they are. Um, yeah, I, yeah, for me, yeah, tension would be number one. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good one. Yeah. So, um, and again, you know, off the dome, off the cuff, you know, it's okay. like something that I would say, I would say, piece of paper. <laughs> piece of paper? We All talking? Right, so y'all, we live right, right now, Destiny. We talking? I know we're live, right. but I'm a planner, like I've already told so y'all. So let me take this paper. Let me take your control away. This, no, this is you a can take my control, control away with something else. <laughs> um, okay, so my frustration number one. 
the biggest, the one of the hardest things for me to learn that I feel like I learn all the time over and over and over again is accepting that my husband is not me. He's not going to think like me. He's not, he's not going to do the things that I would do. And that's okay. Um, because like, there's little things that we do differently. Like, um, oh, thank you. The Ron Westfall says that we have, t uh, you two have adorable children. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Um, Understanding that the decisions that my husband decides to do and decisions that I decide to make doesn't necessarily make either one of us wrong or right, but it just means that he's his own person and I'm my own person and that's okay. So just accepting that because I think that sometimes like, like the way you hate the way that I fold towels, or I hate the way that he'll like wear, he wears this specific shirt every like Two days. I don't know He's in the talking. same shirt, the Fugary shirt. Oh, because it's a, comfortable, wears, it's a comfortable shirt. He wears this family reunion. I was going to wear, gonna wear it today. <laughs> he wears this family reunion shirt like every other day. I just don't understand. Like stuff like that. And I'm a type of person like I'm not going to wear the same clothes every day for the most part. Like I'm going to switch it up. But my husband will wear the I'm, same shirt. I will simple, buy him so person. many clothes and he will wear the same things. Like these are just examples of... I'm a, I, I like wearing comfortable clothes. Okay. These are just examples of the fact that he's his own person and I'm my own person. But I have to just... I get frustrated sometimes because I'm like, oh, why didn't he? Oh, another one, y'all. Whoa, whoa, the whoa. Trash. This, is, this is not a bash Terry Should I just say that she loves the family reunion shirt? Thank you. Y'all, listen. Our The trash people comes out. They used to come out. This really drove me insane. Um, They used to come out later in the evenings, right? So, like, probably, like, 4.30 or 5 or something. And... um. Recently, they started coming at like seven in the morning. And so common sense would say like, let's plan ahead. If I know that they're coming, let's just say Wednesday morning, then I'm going to go ahead and roll the trash out Tuesday night. What does my husband do? He wakes up every Tuesday morning Wednesday morning. when he or every Wednesday morning when he hears the the garbage people outside. And he's like, oh, snap, let me run and get the trash. Oh, snap. Like. My dude, you already knew they was coming. Like that drives me insane. So like this week, they only took one trash can. We have two trash cans. They only took one trash can because he could only make it in time to give them one. But it's just no, because like, the other one had boxes in it, and I couldn't break them down fast enough. Yeah, so it's just like <laughs> stuff like that. Having to understand that my husband is not. I'm a planner. He's not a planner, and that's okay. But stuff like that just drives me insane. And those are just little examples because it's just like you can save yourself less stress if you just plan and just but take the trash out the day before instead of running out like oh and then he wakes us all up i'm like in a panic like is something wrong with the kids <laughs> oh i forgot the trash like what <laughs> i'm just kidding well, okay. first off first off hold up before you go see the next point you don't have to deal with the trash. I have to deal with the trash. No, so why is this? It shouldn't be stressing you out at all. It should be stressing me out. Wouldn't it stress you out if he, if he, if he, um, you interrupted my sleep? So By the time it's that? like seven thirty, usually you should be up if you're not up. Okay, whatever. Uh, Nia Chanel says set alarm on his phone for the night before. Girl, you know what? That's a great idea. I'm gonna do that. I'm going to set an alarm for you that says, take out the trash. I tell Nia Chanel, I sleep through alarms. <laughs> okay, well, you you going to be awake for this one. Um, okay, so uh, my next one would be... Oh, no, no, wait. Back to my point. You don't have to deal with the trash. I have to deal with the trash. So all you yeah, but it's still like... <laughs> so what, I would say, what, I would say this. see, that's back to the controlling point. Just let it go. The trash will be taken out one way or the other. And I can just call the people. Um, the next one would be, um, frustration for me as a mom and a wife, just feel like I can't balance it all. And I'm not meant to balance it all, but I just always, and I spoke about this before, just feeling like I have like so much going on, like, um, that, that I, you know, I, I want to be like great as a mom and then you want to be great as a wife but then being great as a mom you're depleted by the time it's time to spend time with your husband and be great as a wife so it's just like 
I don't know. That that frustrates me sometimes too, because I feel like if I'm doing great in one category, I'm not doing great in the other category. But I feel like I can never give a hundred percent in both categories. Like I feel like it's just always room for improvement. Oh, okay. So this now this is going to be the uh, therapist hat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're sitting on my foot. Oops. Sorry. Okay. All right, so... You want me to read people's comments before you... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. Lauren Love said, me and my husband are the opposite. He's the planner. I'm not really, but I run the girl's schedule. Okay, girl. <laughs> Maybe you should be a planner. What? No, but that's not what that said. That <laughs> okay. said, I am the opposite. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, we have the trash reminder on our Echo. I need to do that. That's a really great idea. I'm going to really steal that idea. All right, um, all right people, let's, 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 let's talk about this trash. He ain't liking okay. that. <laughs> let's talk about this trash. And Kenny okay. said that I, control. Yeah, girl, I, I got problems. Let's talk about this trash thing. Okay, so I know to take the trash out, but sometimes I look at it and like, yeah, I'll just do it in the morning. So it's not yeah, that I'm forgetting. I'm not forgetting about the trash. I just you're forgetting about the trash because it's not. I just don't have seven thirty when the people are. Well, ready sometimes it just depends. I, I'll no, look at it and they'll be like, like three times. Yeah, I'll look at it on Tuesday and I'll be like, yeah, I'll just get up early. And you ain't getting up early. Yeah, but, but but the trash does get taken out. Okay. Um. What were you gonna ask me about feeling like I can't balance it all? Oh yeah, I forgot to put the hat backwards. So why do you feel that you have to? Uh, I guess why are you putting so much on your plate? Like you have to be great, because if you I, are, because the thing is, if you're already great in both areas, why do you feel like you're not good enough? Oh, let me give you some sugar. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. No, I think it's 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 not pressure that you are putting on me. That's I know, the thing. I know. That's what, that's what um, I, it's just something within myself, and I don't even. I wouldn't say that I'm a perfectionist. Would you say that? I would say you like things straight and neat. And clean. <laughs> But I, perfectionist? I, I, no, I just just I want everything in the you just want everything in the right position, clean, <laughs> okay, so shiny. Not, I would say you yeah, like no, but not a perfectionist though. <laughs> okay, I I would say the older that I get, the more I'm starting to turn into like a perfectionist in some categories, mm -hmm. and I don't know what that's about. Well, I guess the control. Yeah, I'm gonna say I, you just said maybe it. Maybe I need to go sign myself up for a fourth therapist and be like, look, girl, I already know what my problem is. I just need you to dissect it a little bit more. Let's just start with this. I'm controlling. What can you do? But um, tell yeah, you no, I think it's just sessions. That's what it is. Yeah, tell so they can get my money. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's not a pressure that you put on me. I just put it on myself. I just, you know, always feel like there's more I could be doing as a mom and there's more I could be doing as a wife. But I guess at the end of the day, there's it, always going to be more you could be doing. Is so. this is this because of things you're seeing online again? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. No, no, I'm trying. No, to, it's just within myself. Like, but, I just, what, but I'm saying, where does it come from? Because it's not coming. It's not it just coming. It comes from out uncontrolling. Air. Okay, but I'm okay. So we're, all right, so we're going to use controlling as the base point from now mm -hmm. on, I guess. Okay. You know what it is too. You mm -hmm. know when you're younger. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just heard that therapist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're younger, you have this idea of what like like I had an idea of what marriage is like. Mm, okay. And then now, where'd you get that idea from? That's what I'd like to know. Huh. Now that's probably a mix of I would say more movies or TV shows because everybody who knows my mom knows my mom is like, girl, marriage is a mess. It's a hot mess. <laughs> like so, she she definitely didn't like fulfill my life with these fantasies and stuff about marriage. But um, I would say more so TV shows and what like yeah, TV shows probably. You know, you know what TV shows you watch? Uh uh. Okay, Not nothing I could think of like think of, the top of my yeah, head, okay. but just any shows they kind of led you to believe like the woman she cooks, she cleans, she takes care of the household, she puts the kids on the school bus, she picks the kids up, she has a meal prepared. You know, it just shows you yeah. all these different things that a woman is expected to do. And so, in my mind, even though I know like you're okay if I don't cook, you're okay if I don't clean, but in my mind, I feel like I need to cook, I need to clean. And, you know, I don't like to eat out and stuff like that. So a lot of that is not necessarily for you, but also mm. for myself. Mm. But I don't know. I just had these ideas of like, like I had an idea of what I wanted to be like as a wife. I had an, have an idea of what I want to be like as a mom. And so I really put the pressure on myself. That just, mm. it really is what it is. But it's frustrating for me that sometimes I don't really have peace. Like, like I didn't cook today and mm. it's really kind of annoyed me that I had to spend money to get my own food somewhere else. G and I could have just cooked guys, by the way, I had chicken nuggets and fries for the first time. And yeah, he was so excited that I wasn't cooking so he could have uh, so chicken, chicken nuggets and French right, fries. Right, Cause kid, he used to yeah. eat that all the time me when the, he was, uh, yeah, me, and the, me and the kids had a good time. Okay. 
But I'm not eating no chicken nuggets and fries. I'm not interested. Those are, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. It's a no for me. But um, he's he's a great husband, I will say. He definitely um, does not put the pressure on me to cook, does not put the pressure on me to clean. I just put the pressure on myself, and I don't really. I wonder since if I did put the pressure, would that back you away from, let's just say, in a Probably, world, like I'd that, be more rebellious. Yeah, since I did. So, since he told me to so, clean, I ain't cleaning. So, do you think this is psychological warfare right now? Then I think if I did, if you did start putting pressure on me and I stopped, then yes, I would say so. But I don't. I think at this point, you know, I'm 32, so at this point, I feel like I'm kind of stuck in who I am. Okay. Um. Well, I'm not gonna say that because I hate when people say that. I definitely want to. But you definitely, you definitely just said. It. No, I definitely just said it with conviction as mm-hmm, well. You did. But I, I don't want to be that person. I want to be that person that's evolving and growing every single day. So I acknowledge that I'm controlling and I acknowledge that I have these problems. But the question is, what am I gonna do about it? Um, okay. I'm gonna turn, so, yeah. I'm gonna turn my hat back around because I'm done asking questions for now. Okay. Um, my next one was suppressing real emotions that come out in other ways. I think you kind of touched on it, in, like frustrations and stuff. But mm-hmm. well, kind of. Um, but suppressing real emotions. So you know how like you're you're mad about. Well, maybe I just do this. Mad about something else, but then you you like don't talk about what you're really mad at about and so mm-hmm. it comes out like in a different way like you change the diapers mm-hmm. you do this because i want to do that you know mm-hmm. like kind of like i guess it, it comes out kind of passive aggressive um i think that's something i would do in the beginning of our marriage okay. not necessarily now because i feel like now we i think we do a pretty good job of communicating mm-hmm. okay. yeah and then my last one um <clears throat> when i would say when we first got married we were broke, like I talk, tell y'all all the time. Uh, we had like zero dollars and zero cents. And just, you remember like how we were just getting married. We were living with my parents. We had no money. We were trying to find jobs. So all that stress and then trying to figure out like who we were as a married couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and just that was st- super frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, that was like, obviously we're not like living that life now, but... Just that was super frustrating in the beginning, trying to start a mar- marriage, trying to figure out who we are, and then you're you still got all these life problems. Like life still hits you regardless. Okay. So yeah. Gotcha. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is our. Um, oh, yeah, you might want to check, to make sure you ain't get any questions. That is our. Oop. Wait. I did something wrong. So, y'all, if anybody wants to come on and ask a question, relationship question, let us know. You can go live with us really quickly. If not, we'll keep talking. Oh, um, the Ron Westfall said, what part of Georgia are y'all from? North or, or central or, or southern? We are looking to move to Augusta. Do you know much about that part? Uh, uh, we have family in Augusta, actually. We yeah. don't know a whole lot about well, well, that part. Yeah, I was say I don't know about, but I know um, on my dad's side we have a bunch of family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bunch, bunch of family in Augusta. Um, they're I, what I will say. They are they've made some changes to the city because Augusta used to be look like an old rundown town, and now it has it's a, pretty nice. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot more um, to it than it used mm-hmm. to be. So. Yeah, we were just in Augusta what two weeks ago? Uh, yeah, two or three weeks ago, and um, it's a lot there. Is the mall is really nice? I actually really enjoyed the mall. There's a lot of food places. I thought it was nice, so I think Augusta is a nice place to be at. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are actually in North Georgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're north. Um, and you said sorry to be off topic. No worries. You don't have to. Does anybody want to go live with us really quick? You can ask us a question or you can play a game with us. Um, you- Nia Chanel said, Destiny, we have some things in common. Yeah, girl. I'm crazy, child. So <laughs> God is still working on me. Mm. Cheyenne said she has always been like that. Mm. I have. Only God can help. Yeah, and good. Candace said, clean and shiny. Yeah, girl.
Huh? Can y'all hear us now? Remember when you hit something? Oh, okay. okay. Shine so they can hear y'all. Okay. All right, Candace, request to go live, girl. <clears throat> I don't know what we got going on. Hopefully, our right. internet stays connected. All right, well, while she's going live, um, have you ever been, I will say, what's some things you've been overcharged for in your lifetime? Everything. So, everything. Well, talk about every, well, everything. Clean. I'm, this is going to be hard. Uh, at least, baby. Teenage love affair. <laughs> I don't know. That's great. That's actually pretty really close. Something love affair. Family love, uh, love affair. Teenage just, love affair. No, I keep saying it. No. Let me let me start over with Candace. This is ghetto. Sorry. <laughs> you good. You good. You don't know my name. There we no. go. There we go. There we go. All right. So what is what is it right now? Two two. Oh, actually, Candace got disconnected halfway through the other song. Sorry. <laughs> we don't even know. All right, we'll call it two two. We'll go best. Uh, let's go best of five. Uh, Beyonce. Me myself and I. Yeah. Beyonce. <laughs> There's I don't know why you're playing Beyonce because Candace is going off of those. Duh. Hey, let's do, let's do the rest, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> why is the intro so long? Uh, oh, SWV rain, rain down on me. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why. I was like trying to figure out what it was. That was I was like, what is this? That was long ago. All right, Candace is up 4-2. Candace is... Well, she's probably going to win. Candace is about to win. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's, it's okay. Uh, ordinary people, John Legend. All right, Destiny. Oh, Trouble. I didn't hear it. Okay, cool. Uh -oh, oh, sorry. Destiny on the comeback. Uh, let's see how much it... Let's see. Uh, let's go here. Um, oh, Mariah Carey, Mariah Carey Fantasy. All right, Candace, Candace for the win. What was it? Oh, Fantasy. Fantasy. Okay. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Yeah. You're welcome. And Candace, you win. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Nothing like that. <laughs> Don't <laughs> work on that. When Come we make it in life, we'll have some prizes. Come again next time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. oh, man. Love you, girl. Love you, too. I don't know how to like take me off. So oh, hold on. I think she said she don't know how to take her off. Uh, hey, look, hey, look, let look. me press this and see what happens. I'll go say we don't either. Ooh, that was your that was, that was my pink comment. Well, I don't know. I, I'll just I'll just leave out and come back in. Oh wait wait I think I know how to do it. Oh. There you go. See you, Kim. Okay. Um. All right. What are we doing? Um. Oh. Uh, no. Just really oh, hard. did you hear about the the lady that had twins? I follow this story because um, you know, we have twins. The lady that had twins. Did you, uh, I'm sure people heard about it, but she, the lady who had the twins and both her twins went missing because she was working and then she um i guess got out of her car she was doing like doordash or something and then she uh while oh, she was walking in somebody else walked out and took the kids but then they both were found well long story short they found recently yeah they found both of them and they were unharmed and fine oh, okay. but recently one of the babies died um, I can't remember oh, what they said the baby died from. I think it was like choking or something like that. So I was just thinking, I mean, my goodness, they went, she went through so much. And I know so many people have so much to say about her, um, you know, leaving her kids in the car. And I'm, I'm kind of torn about that because on one end, it's like, okay, Question. no, you shouldn't leave your kids in the car. Question. I wasn't aware, too aware of the story, but I did hear about it. Mm -hmm. Now, did did they take her car or did they take them out the car? They took her car. So she left her kids in the car. She, she left, left her kids in her car. She left her car running? I guess. 
Oh, okay. mm -hmm. the key, that means key, that means key. But it's, it's kind of like a case 22. Um, yes, it, it's so sad. One of the babies died from choking. Um, I believe they died of choking. I know one of the babies died, but I don't want to 100% say it's choking. Um, it was something like that, though. Um, but I'm torn about it because on one end, 100%, I don't agree that you should leave your kids in the car. Um, but I also have a lot of support. So if you're a single mom, um raising twins which i can't even imagine doing that because i'm tired with a, a husband did she, did um, she go in the store she went dash. in there because she was working doordash oh she was working DoorDash. Mm -hmm. okay so it's how, like on, on the other okay. end she's trying to support her herself and her children so it's the catch 22 um you know, you know what probably happened she probably honestly what happened probably is she did it so much she didn't think twice mm -hmm. about it yeah and then somebody just hopped in the car i wonder if somebody hopped in the car and didn't realize the kids were in the back I'm sure. i think that that might have been what it was because i mean obviously well, the lady who took the kids wasn't really trying to harm them. the only thing that she did was kind of weird is i think she took the kids out and put them in like random places um mm -hmm. so people actually really had to look for those kids but i don't know it's, it's kind of of torn because the world is not really set up for you to succeed as a as a parent i feel like sometimes there's not really a whole lot of support child care is super expensive so on one end i understand having twins trying to raise them by yourself and then you're trying to support your kids financially one thing that i do that works for me though is to sometimes i'll call stores and say hey uh, I got my kids in the car. Can you bring my food out to me? And you never know who will actually go out there and, and give you your food. So that's some things you could do as a single mom um, you, or as a mom, period, with your kids. But she was she was working good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so you're saying. But she could have, like, maybe call, asked the rest of oh, them. Oh, I asked them. But needless to say, I mean, at the end of the day, the kids were found, and that's not how they died. But I just, I just feel for her. I brought that up to, just to say that I feel for her, and I can't imagine, like, you know, you've already given yourself a mild heart attack, and I'm sure she she feels so bad that yeah. she even left her kids in the car like that, and that happened, and then for you to do that, and they're found, and they're okay, and then for one of the babies to die off of, like, choking, which is something so, like, anybody can choke. It's just, mm -hmm. it was a really, really sad story, so I really pray for her, uh, pray she doesn't you know, she she still keeps herself uplifted, given the circumstances as much as she can, because, you know, at the end of the day, she still has another kid. And I don't know if she's got more, but yeah, I just, I really, that story was really sad. Mm, okay. So, yeah. pants from backwards. So, <laughs> so is this the type of scenarios you talk about? When you no, because I wouldn't leave in? my kid in the car. So you would, okay, <laughs> really. so like this, so, so you wouldn't put, so this not... wouldn't, this wouldn't apply to you no know, you over there. Okay. certain things like you know i'm not certain things i'm not putting myself in certain people's shoes like i'm not i'm, I'm not leaving my kids if i left my kids in the car then something i'm dead or something because mm -hmm. there's no way mm -hmm. i don't even like to live my leave my kids in the car when i gotta pump gas and if i that's normally like i have my husband put gas in my car and if i do get out of the car to pump my gas i lock the car because people are crazy and this is why I want to have a gun because people are crazy. So at least if you try to take my car, I can shoot the tires or something because you're not you're not taking my kids. <laughs> like I can't imagine anybody taking my kids. Like I just can't. I can't. But no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, so this, this leave my kids in the car. So this scenario doesn't apply to you. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. And like I would only leave my kids in the car if it was like a matter of life or death. Like I'm not. I don't play that because I know people are crazy. Well, what's a matter of life or death? I'm confused. I'm just thinking, like, if something happened to somebody I love, and they're like meeting mouth to mouth. So this is, or these are the so these are the scenarios. So based off of this, this is a scenario that. You, well, honestly, I didn't even think about that until now. Okay. Like, I never, I didn't think, like, you know, okay. what are situations that I would leave my kids in the car? But I'm thinking about it as we're talking. Uh -huh. But yeah, no, I didn't. I'll turn, um, I'll turn my head back. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't um, leave my kids in the car. But like I said, because I want to make it very clear, I have support. I have a support system. If I didn't have that. I can't say what I would or wouldn't do because you're a mom trying to do the best that you can to, to survive because she was working and I have to acknowledge that. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's really all I had. Um, do you have anything else? Mm. Oh, I found this thing, of course, my favorite site, Reddit. Mm hmm um oh, this is a relationship scenario oh yes you know. all right y'all before we close out we're going to talk about a relationship scenario so on this 
relationship on this episode of relationship advice we have and i keep accidentally knocking out of it okay so basically somebody's asking okay let me go through a scenario mm -hmm. a friend of mine bought my wife a swimwear as a gift this seemed odd to me in general but it's rather skimpy which makes it even more inappropriate i asked my wife if she thought it was weird but she said she likes it and thought it was a thoughtful gift I haven't said anything to my friend. Is this weird? Okay, I'm going to repeat back to you because I just want to make sure I hear it right. Mm -hmm. the, the husband has a male friend that purchased a swimsuit for his wife. That's mm -hmm. skimpy. Mm -hmm. um, and the wife says she, she thinks it's a thoughtful gift. Yeah, she thinks it's a thoughtful gift because she's a thotty McThotty is what oh. it sounds like. <laughs> that is wild. Like, first of all, why is I would say the husband needs to reassess what kind of friends he's got because why would one of your friends buy your wife a sexy bikini and yeah yeah that's what I said there's things that basically there's things that, that like certain gifts it's like oh okay that's nice this is not that situation yeah like I feel like if this any of your is, friends bought me um this is like Oh, the Ron Westfall said that's odd. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely odd. It's given pre. It's given that they might be messing around yeah, on the it's side. Giving, by... It's giving you not my friend, or you don't understand, <laughs> or you don't understand relationship boundaries. So, no, I yeah. give it that maybe yeah. that wife and that that friend is messing around yeah. that's, that's yeah, because that's that's yeah, because yeah, honestly. But yeah. and my thoughts are. I would never, like, none of my husband's friends would buy me any clothes. And if they did, it'd be, like, maybe, like, a robe or, like, a, But it'd be know, a robe a, for both of us. It wouldn't be just... Yeah, or, like, a pajama set that's, like, not, like, that's, like, cozy, not, like, scandalous. Like, yeah. it's not, none of his friends would be buying me no bikini. And if they did, I wouldn't wear it because I would think that's creepy. Like, mm -hmm. I just don't. Unless, like, no. no I just, that's what I'm, I'm thinking that. if you have, like, female friend or something, but... He ain't doing that. Yeah, so, so yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that so that would be, um, so, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, because I'm like, all right, what what's going on in the, at this point? But if I you feel like, my thing is what what gets you to the point that you feel comfortable enough? Yeah, send, you feel comfortable because that wife, wife is sending them. So signals. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm like. So that's probably not my friend anymore. Yeah, and, healthy boundaries are good. Exactly because mm -hmm. even if one of his friends did buy me a sexy swimsuit, I still have a choice to wear it or not. And for me, I wouldn't wear that. And so he has it's a still choice. Your, to, he has a choice not to send it either. Yeah, he has a choice not to send it. But at the end of the day, it's not about what other people do outside of your marriage. Oh yeah, your yeah. Marriage, you you all have a commitment with mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. So I just feel like, you know, no matter what every, everybody sends you or what everybody else is doing, my loyalty should be with you, not mm -hmm. with some guy that gave me a swimsuit that I think is cute. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, can't you just go buy it in a different color yourself? Like, if you really thought it was cute, mm -hmm. you know, and buy it for yourself or something? Like, I don't know. I think that's weird. Yeah. It's given that the wife is... Um... Scenario time. Now I got, now I got a scenario. Yeah. All right. So now, okay, let's use the same situation. Mm-hmm. You've been talking about this swimsuit to everybody that you've been wanting, mm -hmm. especially to me, but you've been talking to everybody. You've been like, oh, I think I would look nice in this swimsuit. Mm -hmm. And you keep hearing it. Mm -hmm. And then, but I'm not buying it. Mm -hmm. I would say, I don't buy it. I'm, I would say, I'm, I'm just ignoring you. Mm -hmm. But then my friend, he buys it for you. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that scenario? Um, well, if I'm talking about a swimsuit that I really, really like, chances are I probably have already bought it for myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, I can't really picture that situation because if it's really a okay, swimsuit that I'm really into, yeah. I would have bought it already. So I don't need, like, okay, your okay. friends buying okay. me something. Okay, never but, okay, mind. Okay, if we're just thinking never mind. scenario based, you know, never I mean. Mind. Good night, everybody. All right. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I would just buy it myself. I'm not about to get on social media and talk about something I really want and give another person opportunity to... I mean, it's, unless it's, like, completely outlandish, but it wouldn't be, like, a swimsuit. What would it be? I don't know. Unless I was, was like, oh, I want, like, front row tickets at a, at a Super Bowl game or, you know, yeah, something yeah, like that. Not, yeah. And if yeah. somebody shocked us with it, I would imagine that they get two seats. Yeah, I would say, I imagine they get two. Yeah, I would say <laughs> But two. I'm not going to be like, oh, I really want this swimsuit. My husband won't get for me. Like, I don't know. I, w I would say something that's more, like, you know, that I can't buy for myself mm -hmm. right now because we're going to be rich one day. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, all right, y'all. So we appreciate y'all watching our TED Talk. 
Um, I don't we, think this is considered a TikTok. <laughs> I'm just joking. I know it's a joke, but I don't know. But so. um, we are going live every Thursday. We're going to try and go live every single Thursday so you all can get to know us. We appreciate everybody who tuned in. What time are we going live? We have not discussed that yet because <laughs> my, my husband wants to go live at 7.30 from here on out. Um, and I'm not opposed to it. I just want to make sure that people are like home and settled and actually have time to watch. So we may try 7.30 next week. But yeah, work usually on Friday, so they usually at the house. Well, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us, letting us talk about our fears and frustrations, letting us play a little Shazam game, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. letting us talk relationship, random scenarios, and everything else that we did on here. Another game. We appreciate y'all, and thank y'all for watching. Bye, y'all.